Hello everyone, it's Kay. So today, well actually on this video, um, I will talk about the wave analysis by Ichimoku. So basically I do the lives, I used to do the lives every day and this month from November, I have decided to uh, record uh, three videos per week. So that will be Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Saturdays. I decided to record some videos and upload it on YouTube so that uh, you can get the sense and also the essence of um, how I present the market um, by this Ichimoku and also my own strategy, KTS, k strain strategy. So today's topic is about waves and I will talk about the N wave and Y wave and P wave examples. So if you want to know the whole schedule for this month of November, um, you can just come to um, come to my website, the link is on the below description, you can come to the website and scroll down a little bit and you can find the schedule here. So this video is uploaded on the 3rd of November and the topic is going to be about Ichimoku wave patterns. So as it says here, uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Saturdays um, there will be recorded videos and Mondays Thursdays, Fridays, and also Saturdays and Sundays, sorry, Sundays, uh, there will be Ichimoku weekly forecast on Sundays. So um, let's get started now. So before starting anything here, just a quick disclaimer. Uh, this information is based on my knowledge and experience. So when you take tries, please do with your own risk. So let me start to explain how I look at the market or how you can look at the market by the wave analysis. So waves are actually the major component of Ichimoku and there are actually a um, couple of types of waves. But today, this month, um, I want to present um, this uh, Ichimoku wave patterns as N wave, Ichimoku N wave, and Y wave, and also the P wave. So today, I will introduce these three important and major waves of Ichimoku and every uh, th Tuesdays, every Tuesdays uh, from onwards, uh, from next week, I will talk about the end wave next week and next next, wave, uh, next next week, I will talk about the Y wave and also on the 24th of November, I will talk about the P wave uh, by looking at some real chart examples. So let me show you, uh, let me show the N wave first briefly. So N wave is the major component of Ichimoku. And basically, it can be captured uh, by taking the highs and lows of the market. And you just basically connect the dots and you can see the waves. And where you can see the N wave will be, for example, here. So this is AUD USD daily chart. Uh, so from this um, 24th of July, the market is going up and you can simply connect these dots. So here's another high on this uh, 31st of July and another low here, the 3rd of August and another high here on this uh, 7th of August and over here, the 12th of August and here, 19th of August and then 20th of August was the next low and all the way up there was um, the all-time high on this uh, 1st of September. So you get the dots of highs and lows and simply you connect it. Simply you, you connect these dots like this and you have the waves. So this is N waves. Actually these are N waves because this is bullish. Uh, this is um, um, higher lows you can find higher lows and higher highs and this is bullish in wave all the way. So as long as the price, as, as long as the market renews higher and re renews lower, uh, this is bullish in wave. And this is exactly what you can see here. But if you look at the market afterwards, what happened is that from this day of uh, 1st of September, the market went down. And seemingly, after this uh, 9th of September low, if the market continued to go up this way, 
then that was becoming the bullish in wave continuously. So that was a continuous bullish in wave. However, the market did not renew the recent high, but instead it went downwards afterwards. So instead of renewing the recent high, the market renewed the recent low and broke downwards this way. So this structure is the bearish end wave. So simply you connect the dots, the highs and lows of these dots, and you can find this bearish end wave afterwards by connecting the dots like this. So and exactly on this day, 1st of September, it was reversal day. So b because um, until then, that was the bullish in wave, as we saw earlier. And from this um, 1st of September, the market became bearish in wave. So it was bearish trend in terms of the wave analysis here. And afterwards, what happened was that the market went up from this uh, 25th of September, the market went up and this became bullish in wave afterwards. You see the lows and highs are higher up to um, this uh, 9th of October. So this was bullish in wave. However, from here, the market did not renew the recent high upwards, but instead it renewed the recent low downwards this way and it continues to go down. If you connect these dots, this is going down. So this is bearish end wave. So when you see this bearish end wave structure, you can expect the market to continue to go down this way. So in terms of the web analysis, this is downtrending right now. So this is a wave structure and you can find these examples many many chapters many many charts on any charts and any time frames. So let's look at the Euro USD for uh, to present a couple of other in wave structures. So right here we see consecutive bullish in waves. So let's start from here. On this day of uh, 3rd of August it went up to uh, this day of uh, 6th of August and then it went down to this way on the 12th of August and then it went up it renewed the recent high technically upwards and it landed here so it was 18th of August so this was the bullish in the wave that you can find right and then afterwards after this retracement the market went all the way up to this day uh, 1st of September and this was another bullish in the wave so we can see that there are two bullish in the waves and the market went all the way up here. And afterwards, if the market were going up like this, this was the continuous uptrend. However, it didn't happen. As you can see, the market went downwards afterwards. It went down like this way and went all the way down to this level. 1.163 level, the market went down. So this was bearish in wave because it renewed the recent low downwards and this was bearish in wave and what happened afterwards was that we can see that there was a bullish in wave you might already notice that this is a bullish in wave renewed the recent high uppers and this was a bullish in wave and now the market is going down this way and so in this case what i will be thinking is that this is a bearish trend and not and because not only there are consecutive bearish in the vase, but also um, the market renewed the recent low downwards this way. <clears throat> so um, it can be bearish in the wave and the market might go down to this way. So if that happens, this becomes bearish in the wave and this is a market structure that, that is most likely happening right now. Um, and with that in mind, um, you, if you can draw the lines, there are a resist, uh, support line here on this uh, 1.162 area, there are support line. So it might be supported and it might go up afterwards. 
And if it does, if the market goes up, then it might be resisted in this area on this previous low of 1.169 uh, area and it might continue to go down afterwards. So, uh, but it might be supported in this area twice or three times and go up, perhaps. So, I would wait for the breakout of the recent low downwards in this case and then look for the sell chance afterwards over here. However, if we start to see the uptrend after the supported this line, if we start to see the bullish in a wave afterwards, like this, renews the recent high upwards this way, then it might become the continuous uptrend, like this way. So when you see this setup, when you see this first bullish in a wave, you don't want to look for sell chance anymore because the price might continue to go up this way. So N wave is very important in terms of capturing what's happening in the market and also which way potentially the market is going right now. So that's N wave and I will talk about more details of this N wave uh, next week on the 10th of November. So uh, you can expect my talk on this day. So let's move on. Let me show you another example for this uh, Y wave or N uh, P wave structure. So hold on, here I, f I found the P wave structure. So this is um, AUD USD pair and this was in between uh, 30th, 30th of April up until, um, up until 15th of May, there was a P wave here. So P wave is basically the triangle. Uh, usually it's called a symmetrical triangle range market and it can break either up or downwards. In this case, it broke upwards this way. But here, this is called P wave in Ichimoku because when you see this, when you add one line here, it becomes like a P shape. So this is called P wave and this is the typical squeezing wave. It can break up or downwards. In this case, it was a bullish in a wave continuously. Previously, there was a bullish in a wave like this. So, in this manner, we can expect the market goes up like this way. But I will talk about it um, in the future live. Next next week, or well, actually, sorry, at the 20th of, 24th of November will be the P wave lecture. So, I will talk more deeper level about this P wave and how you can potentially capture the breakout direction. So, there's another. Um, P wave example that I found and which was here AUD JPY and the P wave happened in between the 22nd of July until sorry until uh, 21st of August there was a P wave structure so you can draw the lines and you can see the highs are getting lower and lower and then the lows are getting higher and this is a typical P wave structure. And this is not the N wave, actually. This is a P wave by itself, and it can break up or downwards to either direction. In this case, it broke upwards, so, and afterwards it retraced backwards. But potentially, if you see the P wave, it's been squeezing, so um, you can expect the market goes breaks towards either direction. So this is the typical P wave structure which is the part of Ichimoku wave analysis. So let me present the Y wave. Uh, y wave is um, kind of rare to find. So I found this Y wave on this AUDCAD pair and this was in between, hold on, in between um, 21st of June up until uh, 23rd of July, there was Y wave. So, you can see that this is Y wave simply because if you look at it horizontally and if you just add one line here, then horizontally it becomes like the shape of Y letter. So that's why this is called a Y wave structure. And this is the opposite way of uh, P wave where you see the highs getting higher and higher 
and the lows getting lower and lower, and this is the Y wave structure. And when you see Y wave, uh, the best advice that I, gi gi that, that I can give you is just stay away from the chart because it can break up or down to any ways and we don't know which way it's breaking basically. So when you see Y wave, it's either you wait for the next trending market or you look at the lower time frame and in lower time frames uh, you might see some trends because it's uh, expanding volatility market. So this is a daily chart, and in this daily chart, you don't, you might not gonna see any trends because this is basically ranging, like expanding ranging. But um, if you look at, like for example, this area, downtrend, or on this uptrend area, or even this downtrend area, in a four-hour chart or one-hour chart, you might see some up down trends. So. You don't want to depend on the daily chart because on the daily chart, Y wave, basically you don't know which way it's going. But if you look at the lower time frames, you might see some trending market. So I recommend you to look at the lower time frames, and if you want to take it, you might be want to um, you might want to um, capture the trends on lower time frames and take trades still. But this is uh, the example of Y wave. So, uh, this is rare. Y wave is rare to find, but when you happen to find it, then the best option is stay away from the chart. So, that was a brief explanation of this uh, Y wave and N wave and P wave structure. And this is going to be the topic for this month. So, once again, I will talk about the N wave next week on the 10th of November. And on the 17th of November, I will talk about the web, web analysis, Y wave. And also 24th, I will talk about the Ichimoku P wave analysis. So, and tomorrow, I will talk about the concept of the KTS. So, KTS is actually the strategy that I created by my own. And this is a multiple time frame, time frame analysis, uh, mainly by using Ichimoku. And also lower time frames. I take trades on five or fifteen minute, 15 minute time frame to capture exact trading edges. So, um, so this is the concept of the KTS, where you can uh, uh, have a better risk to reward ratio, and you can extend the profit as much as possible with uh, very minimum losses every time you take trades. So tomorrow will be another recorded video. And I will briefly explain how uh, how is the concept of the KT strategy. So I hope to see you on the tomorrow's video, and um, I will see you on the next live on this coming Thursday. Oh, so today, so this is the third of uh, November. So today um, there will be a U.S. selection, big event. So if you are still not taking trades, then better option would be stay away because. There should be some volatility in the market. If you have the positions, especially if you have some positions on USD pairs, then make sure to put the break even line and then go over the news so that you won't lose any money. You can protect your money that way because you don't want to get stopped out on these expected high volatilities due to the US election news. So I hope you have a great day today and I will see you on the tomorrow's video. So until then, please stay healthy and stay gold. Bye for now. Mata ne.